You're looking at one of the most outrageous fights in all of the ocean. This is a fish that turns its entire face into a battle flag. Meet the sarcastic fringe head. This is a pocket-sized bruiser whose mouth can unfold like an umbrella and body check anything that gets too close. It's got a cute name, but not so cute of a temper. These fish are small, they're cranky, and the thing they love most, their territory. So what is a fringe head? The sarcastic fringe head is a blenny, a group of mostly small bottom-dwelling fish. The fringe head part comes from little Siri, tassel-like frills above the eyes that you can see on the screen now. The sarcastic part? This is probably a Victorian scientist's sense of humor, or someone who lost a fingertip. There isn't real consensus on how this fish got its name, but I do choose to believe that it was a scientist having a laugh. This fish is defined by its torpedo body, huge expandable jaws, rows of fine teeth, and when they gape, the inner mouth flashes bold colors, yellows, oranges, dusky reds. It's a living warning sign. These fish are homebodies. You'll find them along the Pacific coast from central slash southern California down through Baja California, most commonly on sandy or rubbly seafloor near rocks, jetties, and kelp edges. They prefer a tight shelter, things like abandoned snail shells, burrows, crevices, even discarded bottles or cans. If it's a hard cavity the right size, a fringe head will try to take it on like a studio apartment. They're typically found below the surface at about 30 to 230 feet of depth, and these are a favorite for many divers in Southern California. Each fish picks a hole and commits. The home is everything, pantry, nursery, throne room, boxing ring, all of it. Now, if you've ever seen a viral clip of two fish smashing faces together, this is likely it. Fringe heads are hyper-territorial, especially the males. When an intruder swims up, the resident pops open the massive mouth like a hand fan, transforming from small fish to do not come closer. The gape display makes the fish look larger and advertises, I am healthy and strong. If the intruder doesn't back down, it's on. The two lock mouths, and yes, it looks like a kiss, but it's really more of a sumo wrestle match. And then they shove, twist, and push until one is forced back into neutral water. So why all the theatrics? Scientists think it's mostly due to their desire to prevent any real injury. Instead of biting chunks out of each other, they compare size and strength with ritualized combat. Winner keeps the address, loser house hunts elsewhere. When it comes to their own feeding habits, these fish are ambush predators. They dart out to snap up crustaceans, small fish, and anything really that they can fit in those big mouths. They're basically just large, aggressive jack-in-the-boxes. Now, where exactly do they fit within the ecosystems they inhabit? Well, essentially, as mid-level predators, fringe heads help control populations of small benthic critters. Shrimp, crabs, little fish. They recycle energy up the food web. In turn, we can think of them as a snack-sized meal for larger fish, birds, and marine mammals. They also compete with other hole dwellers for shelter, which shapes micro-neighborhoods on the seafloor. One of the weirdest things about these fish is that they really do have a habit of adopting shells and using human debris to change out who's living on the bottom of the ocean. It turns this trash into an accidental habitat. It's not great. We would all of course prefer that there's no trash on the ground, but at least there is some use for bottles that find their way to the bottom of the ocean, and it's a very blenny activity. Now what does courtship look like for these fish? Romance for fringe heads is real estate driven. A male with a prime den sends a clear message, I can protect your offspring. During breeding season, which is often around spring or summer, a female visits, lays adhesive eggs on the den's interior, and leaves. The male guards the nest, fanning fresh water over the eggs and chasing anything that moves. Females may lay multiple clutches, and in some blenny species, several females may choose the same good landlord, so a male's den can host multiple batches at once. Mouth displays double as mate quality signals, which is known as sexual selection according to the theory of evolution, and it means that a larger, brighter gape suggests a stronger defender. It's a classic parental investment trade-off. Males that excel at defense and housekeeping leave more surviving offspring. The sarcastic fringe head isn't a targeted fishery species and is generally considered stable where habitat remains intact but nearshore and small means they share space with us, and that brings risks. Some of these include coastal development and pollution, 
We're seeing more and more runoff contaminants and reduced water quality, stress near shore uh, ocean communities. Over the years, habitat loss has become more and more of an issue. There are fewer shells and crevices, which means fewer homes for these fish. As is a true story throughout the world's oceans, we're seeing more ocean warming and acidification which is creating shifts in prey availability and acidification can impact shell producers they depend on for dens. And finally, bycatch and debris are having impacts on the species as well. They are occasionally bycatch themselves and whenever there's fishing that happens near shore. And while they'll move into bottles and cans, trash habitat is obviously not good habitat. They would prefer shells and rocky crevices over a bottle any day. So the bottom line here, there's no real red alarms today, but they're tied to healthy, complex shorelines. So if we protect these, these fantastic and beautiful showy territorial fish will be able to keep their layers. Let's talk about the science of that super mouth because it is definitely a spectacular feature. That gape comes from elongated jawbones, flexible skin, and strong ligaments that allow the mouth to swing wide like a folding fan. Color inside the mouth likely amplifies the threat. A burst of contrast underwater says back off, even before the push match begins. As we always say, form follows function. A display that prevents bloodshed is a brilliant evolutionary hack for life in close quarters. So what did we learn today? The sarcastic fringe head proves that you don't need to be big to be unforgettable. You just need the world's most dramatic front door. If you want more bite-sized monsters and strange ocean engineering, hit subscribe, and remember to always stay curious and stay current. This is The Curious Current, and thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking it, subscribing, and letting me know in the comments what you'd like to learn about next. I'm always looking to hear what you're interested in. My name is Ned, I'm a science storyteller, and this is The Curious Current, where we do deep dives into all the mystery of the ocean. There's so much more to learn, and we're just scratching the surface. As always, stay curious, and stay current, and thank you for watching.